Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media from all over the world, Happy New Year. So you have heard the music at the beginning of the press conference. You can already feel the spirit of the Chinese Spring Festival. I would like to extend our Happy New Year to everybody here on behalf of all my colleagues. Breezes and drizzles tell the coming of spring. Flying snow is a symbol of the arrival of spring. In one of the most important uh, traditional Chinese festivals, the Spring Festival, we are very happy to get together with everybody here. My name is Zhao Weidong, spokesperson of Beijing 2022. First of all, on behalf of Beijing 2022, I would like to express my tribute to friends from Chinese media for giving up your opportunity to get together with your family and the couple of Olympic Games here. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to media from overseas who have traveled from afar to come here to report this game. Over one night, we say farewell to an old year and welcome a new one. At this moment, the whole country is filled with celebrations and the festivity. In order to let media friends from all over the world to understand the Chinese New Year, let's watch a short video clip. The Spring Festival is the most grand and traditional festival for the Chinese people, and it is also one of the oldest festivals in the world. According to the Chinese lunar calendar, 2022 is the year of the tiger, and today is the first day of this very special tiger year. It coincides with the Beijing Winter Olympics, which is a double happiness at the door, and it is a good thing to be a pair. Unity is uh, restored and everything is renewed. The Spring Festival is the time to bid farewell to the past and extend welcome to the future. 23, sugar melon sticky. 24, writing pears. 25, sweeping dust. 26, buying meat. 27, new clothes. 28, house decorations. 29, all families are ready. On the New Year's Eve, the old couplets are replaced by the new ones. Uh, the fortune character happiness is put on the doors. Lights and the decorations are displayed, and the air is filled with joy. Spring Festival is about reunion and the togetherness. No matter how far apart we are, because of love, we come across the mountains and seas just for the warmth of reunion. At the reunion dinner, sweet love from family abounds. You will find the expectations of parents, the longing of beloved ones, and the caring of friends and relatives. Every gift sends best wishes to children. Every new, every new Year greeting draws people's hearts closer. The most beautiful scene in the world is found in reunion, a sentiment deeply rooted in the heart of the Chinese people. Hi, welcome. This is the very hospitality from Beijing 2022 Games. The new year, the new start. We welcome our distinguished guests, a feature snack, a home-cooked dinner, and a grand event of winter sports. We share with our family and friends the very best. We share stories of warmth and hope at the happy hours of the Spring Festival. The Spring Festival is a time for families and friends to stay together. But it's also time for those who are staying together to be a family. Here on the very first day of the Spring Festival, we are together. We are together for a shared future. From the video, I believe you have had an idea about what the Spring Festival is all about. As it is said in the video, the Spring Festival is the time of family to get together. At the same time, when those who are together during the Spring Festival form a family, today the big Olympic family get together here. We are the Olympic family full of love. 
the Spring Festival plus the Winter Olympic Games. It is happiness comes in pairs. This is a precious present from the International Olympic family to China at the same time to present a simple, safe, splendid Winter Olympics is also a present of love and dedication that China presents to the world. Now I'd like to introduce to you uh, my colleagues present at today's press conference, we have with us Madam Yan Jiarong, spokesperson from Beijing 2022. Madam Yang Yang, chair of Athletes Commission Beijing Olympic and the Paralympic Winter Games. You probably know her very well. We also have with us Mr. Wu Xiaonan, director of venue operation team from National Speed Skating Oval. Joining us as well from online, we have with us Mr. Huang Chun, Deputy Director, Pandemic Prevention and Control Office of Beijing 2022. We also have with us uh, Madam Lin Chunchen, designer of uh, the emblem of the Olympic and the Paralympic Games. These two colleagues. Uh, they are at a breakout session of this uh, press conference. Because of uh, the pandemic countermeasures, we understand that uh, some of the guests uh, whom you want to see cannot stay here with us on offline. And so we have had this new idea of having a breakout session online. So this is the first time we organize such a blended event. COVID control countermeasures has presented a lot of challenges for us. No matter how many challenges there are, with the help of technology, we can always find a solution. Such a breakout session online is a way to solve the problems. Ladies and gentlemen, saying farewell to the old and welcome the new, family reunion and opening the door to welcome guests are the things that Chinese people do during the Spring Festival. To say farewell to the old and to welcome the future. In a couple of days' time, China, a nation with long history and hardworking spirit, will join its hands with the Great Olympic for the second time. Looking back at 2008, Beijing presented uh, truly exceptional games and impressed the world. One world, one dream leaves an impressive mark in the history of the Olympics. Fourteen years later, a simple, safe, splendid Olympic is about to be staged in Beijing again. We are now still at the green of the COVID pandemic globally. Against this backdrop, it is particularly warm and precious that we can get together here today. Together for a shared future is an invitation from China. It is an appointment we made with everybody. It is also a reflection of the admiration for a better future of all the countries in the world. The Spring Festival also means being together, family reunion, to be together. In the first month of the Year of the Tiger, Beijing and Hebei, inside and outside the Great Wall, a world-renowned ice and snow event is about to open. We believe that the Winter Olympics is not only a stage for the snow and ice athletes to show their talents and realize their dreams, but also a bridge of culture where hearts and hands are connected and the friendship is shared. Let the cultures of the world talk and communicate here. The Olympic motto, faster, higher, stronger, we know that fairly well, and now we have one new element together. Beijing is the only two-time Olympic city in the Olympic history. We take together for a shared future as its theme. It is particularly uh, meaningful. In my understanding, Together for a Shared Future not only conveys the warmth and the friendliness and the solidarity of the Chinese people, but also highlights the Olympic values of excellence, friendship, and respect, and strongly resonates with the expectations of people around the world. We hold our hands together for a better future. 
In the video clip we just watched, you may have noticed that another element of the Spring Festival is to open the doors and welcome our guests. During the Spring Festival, people in China very often during the Spring Festival welcome our distinguished guests. Today, here, we welcome our distinguished guests. It means that we honor our commitment and present the precious present of the Olympic Winter Games and share it with our distinguished guests. Dear friends, the world is looking at China. We are ready. After over six years of uh, preparation, everything is set ready of Beijing Winter Olympics. Everything is in place and we are just waiting for the curtain to open. As I said earlier, we are still um, at the green of the COVID pandemic. We host this and stage this event um, as we have arranged. This is uh, particularly precious. Everybody has made a tremendous contribution to this event. Up to now, we have completed all the major milestones. Uh, 1,000 days countdown, 500 days countdown, one year, 100 days, 30 days. At 10 o'clock uh, today, this morning, the theme song Together for a Shared Future of Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic and the Paralympic Games has been launched online. More than 100 Chinese musicians and filmmakers have used music to send invitations to the world and to give their support to the Winter Olympics. Our venues, the Snow Ruyi Ice Ribbon, Snow Absaras, Swallow in the Flight, they are all ready in all kinds of video clips. You must have seen the impressiveness of these venues. All the shape making and shape making and ice making have been completed in these venues, and athletes have already begun their official training in these venues. Television broadcasting, timing and scoring systems and other facilities are all in place. Experts from IOC and IFs have made multiple visits to these venues and have given their very high appraisal to the level of these venues. Three Olympic uh, Winter Game uh, villages have been officially open. I'm very happy to see that athletes from all the countries can enjoy a safe, warm, and comfortable life. You may have noticed from social media that a lot of the athletes have given their high praise to the Olympic villages. Especially here, I'd like to call your attention to some events. Some of the competitions will start before the official opening ceremony of the Olympics, such as the curling, ice hockey, figure skating, freestyle skiing, will start its um, competition before the opening ceremony. Tomorrow in the evening, the curling competition will start. And that will be the debut of the Chinese Winter Olympic team in the Beijing Winter Olympics. The first gold medal event will be on the afternoon of the 5th of February, cross-country skiing women's sky athlon. That will be the first gold medal event. Please pay your attention to this very important event. We are very happy to see that uh, IOC President Mr. Bach and his senior team have already arrived in Beijing. Beijing 2022 and Mr. Bach and his team, we have a high-level coordination uh, meetings every day. The purpose of such coordination is to make sure that the games can progress smoothly and to make sure that our media can cover uh, the games effectively. There is a Chinese poem which says that good wine is made ready to welcome distinguished guests and gold is well spent on collecting valuable books. In Spring Festival, Chinese people have the tradition of eating dumplings. We presented dumplings to our friends last night. I hope you have enjoyed them. Dumplings also symbolizes peace, happiness, and reunion. So I'd like to take this opportunity to send my best wishes to friends from the media for a smooth and fruitful stay in the Winter Olympics in China. 
We hope that uh, our friends from the media can take Beijing Olympic as an opportunity. Though it's short, only a dozen days, we can take this as an opportunity for communication and ex exchanges. At the same time of having a successful game, we hope that uh, media friends can also collect uh, your uh, friendship. During this um, Winter Olympics, uh, my colleague and I, Madam Yan Jiarong, and I will be the spokespeople of uh, this Beijing Winter Olympic Games. And now I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Madam Yan Jiarong, who will present more information so that you can also know her better. Thank you very much. The floor is yours, Madam Yan Jiarong. Thank you, Mr. Zhao Weidong. A very happy Chinese New Year to you all. Like Mr. Zhao Weidong said, the Chinese New Year is the time for family and friends to get together, to celebrate their friendship and look forward to a beautiful future. I am very happy to spend the first day of the Chinese New Year with all of you because it is a very unique and unforgettable experience for me. Sports and the culture are the pillars of the Olympic movement. The Olympic Winter Games is not only a sports event of global attention, but also a cultural feast. It is also an opportunity for people to get to know the host city and experience the culture of the host country. So we are willing to take this opportunity to promote the mutual understanding between different nationalities and civilizations and contribute to building a community with a shared future for mankind through the power of ice and snow. The father of the, of the modern Olympic Games, Pierre de Goubertin, once said, the Olympics is not a competition but a cultural exchange and integration from the, car from the heart. In line with this concept, many cultural elements were incorporated in venue construction, signage, look, and other aspects of the Beijing Olympic Winter Games. So I'd like to share with you some of such features and the cultural elements. First, in terms of uh, the design of the venue, it showcases the Chinese style. The Chinese style can be seen everywhere in the venues of the Beijing Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. For example, the Big Air Show Gun incorporates the Dunhuang fresco flying apsaras elements with the curve of the jumping hill resembling the flying ribbon and symbolizing the moment that the element of the athletes flying into the wind. And the National Ski Jumping Center is called Snow Ruyi because it looks like the traditional Chinese mascot, Ruyi. And in Chinese, Ruyi means everything goes as it wishes. So we wish athletes from all countries can achieve good results as they wish in this venue. The national speed skating oval is called the Ice Ribbon. And you know, silk is used as a Chinese cultural symbol in the design of the speed skating oval. And the 22 ribbon-like glass tubes used on the exterior wall look like rainbow at night. It combines sports competition and the romance reflected in the uh, poem that is uh, like a dancer dancing in the sky. The national sliding the national uh, the, the design of the national speed skating oval is mainly in blue and green colors presenting the artistic concept of the chinese green landscape painting also the other venue national sliding center adopts the idea of chinese culture icon dragon and is called snow dragon the 1.9 kilometer track is covered with a layer of uh, dragon scales in the style of ancient chinese architecture it is both uh, beautiful but also can protect the track from being affected by various weather factors the seven courses of the national alpine skiing center also known as the swallow in flight 
are like white waterfalls, making people feel the magnificent, uh, magnificent sight of the Chinese poem. The torrent of the waterfall dashes down 3,000 feet from high, like it's flying down from the sky. And the non-competition venue, Beijing Winter Olympic Village, adopts the design concept of courtyard, which demonstrates the cultural value of the Chinese people who value family harmony and is also compatible with the Olympic spirit of uh, pursuing peace, unity, and friendship. Second, the signage, look, and image of the games are also full of the Chinese-style romance. The signage, look, and image of the Beijing Olympic and the Paralympic Winter Games are full of such romance. First of all, the emblem of the Olympic Winter Games or Winter Dream combines the Chinese calligraphy with snow and ice sports, showing both the vitality and the passion of the winter sports and also the unique charm of Chinese culture. And we have 30 sports pictograms of the games that are presented in the form of ancient seal carving art. Therefore, it perfectly inter, uh, interprets the power of winter sports through the hard lines of carving. And also the idea of the flame lantern is derived from the Changxin Palace lamp of the Western Han Dynasty. And uh, the 24 Chinese solar terms are also fully reflected in the, in the look and image of the Olympic Winter Games. And the badges on the 24 solar terms are made into signages and posted at the 24 entrances of the National Speed Skating Oval. The main press conference room of the MMC, where we are now, is called Li Chun Room. Li Chun in Chinese means beginning of spring, and is the first of the 24 solar terms, and is also the opening day of the Ol Olympic Winter Games, symbolizing hope and a good start. Third, we can, we can feel a strong atmosphere of the Chinese New Year during the whole games. And uh, because it co coincides with the Chinese New Year, in order to let people experience the Chinese New Year atmosphere, we have decorated the three Olympic Village, the MMC, and the hotels with many Chinese New Year ornaments, including lanterns, spring festival scrolls, etc. And on the second floor of the MMC, we have a Beijing Story store where you can enjoy the Year of the Tiger items such as the spring scrolls and uh, the cloth tigers. In the public space of some of the hotels, there are also Beijing embroidery, Peking opera official masks, cloison, and other exhibits of Chinese traditional culture. In the competition venue, you can also feel the Chinese New Year atmosphere. For example, outside the National Speed Skating Oval, we placed the mascot of the Olympic Winter Games, Bing Dun Dun, uh, giving New Year greetings, and uh, people can take pictures with it. The mascot for the Paralympic Winter Games, Xue Rong Rong, uh, which is designed in a red lantern style, are also placed all over the venues. And in terms of the food and beverages, you can also taste the Chinese New Year. We have prepared dumplings like Mr. Zhao said, and also uh, the spring rose, roast duck, and other specialties are also served. On the 15th day of the first month of the Chinese New Year, it is the February 15th this year, we will also serve sweet rice dumplings. So we hope that through the Chinese food culture, athletes, reports, reporters, and other guests can experience the charm of the Winter Olympics on the tip of their tongues while enjoying the games. Thank you for your attention. Just now, Madam Yan Jiarong introduced to you the elements of uh, the Chinese culture and the Chinese New Year. We know that uh, since the ancient Greek time, the Olympic Games is not only a sports event, but also a cultural event. And uh, for all the time, athletes are always the leading actors and actresses on the stage. Therefore, we have invited the chair of the Athletes Commission of uh, Beijing Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games, who, is, who was also the first Olympic champion during the Winter Games. Uh, and has contributed a lot to the preparation of the Beijing Games. So I'd like to invite her to say hello to you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Zhao. 
dear friends from the media. I saw some of the old friends here, even though you're wearing masks, because we are very uh, old, old friends. And uh, I'm very happy to meet you all on the first day of the Chinese New Year. And I wish you all a very happy Chinese New Year. And I felt quite emotional while watching the video clip at this special moment where we were supposed to be with families. But this is a very special way to celebrate the Chinese New Year. And I'm, I'm sure that the Beijing Olympic Winter Games is also a special Chinese New Year for all the Chinese people to be able to share the an experience, the passion, and the vitality of the games. And I'm sure this will be the only time in history to have a both the Olympic Games and the Chinese New Year together. So it's a very special opportunity for us. Just now, Mr. Zhao has already introduced to us uh, some of the information about the Games. I'd like to share with you uh, information on athletes. When we were bidding for the Games, we proposed that we will stage a Games that will be athletes-centered, and uh, we we're very happy to have won the bid. And at the very beginning of uh, the establishment of the organizing committee, uh, the Athletes Commission was built up. And I'm very honored to serve the preparation of the games together with the other 18 athletes, and also to showcase the concept of uh, athletes centered. We have two missions. The first one is to ensure that the games will be a athletes centered games in every detail. And the second mission is uh, to play the uh, role of the athletes as role models in encouraging 3, 300 million people to engage in sports and uh, winter sports. We at the commission, we have uh, two athletes for our Paralympic Games, uh, skiing and curling. And we also have uh, two athletes who have uh, who are also summer Olympic champions, uh, Wang Hao for table tennis and uh, Du Li for shooting. And uh, they will also bring their experiences to the Athletes Commission. During the last six years, we have put forward almost 100 pieces of suggestions to the organizing committee. And uh, at every meeting, Madam Han Suron, the uh, Secretary General of the organizing committee, have listened to our suggestions very attentively. And also, during the whole process of preparations, especially at the key stages, in terms of the development of the venues and the villages, and the construction of the venues and the villages. We have visited the venues on sites multiple times and offered our suggestions. Mr. Wu, to my left, is also an old friend uh, who is uh, the head of the uh, National Speed Skating Oval. We have talked a lot about the progress of the venue construction. And the time really flies. Today, we are very close to the opening of the Beijing Olympic Winter Games. I'm very excited and nervous, uh, which I'm sure is the same as all the athletes who are also nervous and excited. And uh, during the Chinese New Year and uh, during the Games, we have uh, also prepared a lot of uh, exhibitions to showcase the Chinese cultural elements so that the athletes can feel the passion and the hospitality of the Chinese people, but also help them to feel less stressed and to be better prepared for their competition. And uh, finally, I wish all the athletes to realize their dreams in Beijing in China. And also, we will try our very best to provide services they need so that this Beijing Games will become the uh, very memorable Olympic Games for them. So as we can hear from Ms. Yang Yang that she is quite excited, especially quite ex excited to see friends from the media, especially on this very special day. I think we all feel the same way. I'd like to thank my colleagues for their uh, remarks. Now we move on to questions and answers. For anyone who wishes to raise a question, please identify yourself and then raise your question. This one, please.
Happy New Year uh, so and good fortune. The Olympics kick off. I think most of us here in the closed loop are quite eager for that. Uh, to begin, you had mentioned that most venues are ready, but I was wondering if you could go into more detail about that. You have three Olympic zones, Yenxing, Beijing, and Zhangjiakou. Are all those venues, are all those competition venues ready, including the legacy ones here in Beijing and the new ones? Uh, are those up to standard? Uh, and what else has, uh, has been left to be done? Thanks. Thank you very much for your question. I think your question is also a question that a lot of uh, media friends are concerned about. As you said, we are three days to kick off the Winter Olympics. We have uh, made the feast ready, and we are sure to present you good dishes. And the Chinese people always commit our um, promises. As I said earlier, we are still at uh, uh, the green of the COVID pandemic. We have to overcome a lot of difficulties and challenges, and we have made all the efforts to make sure that this game can be presented smoothly. Uh, since we won the bidding of the game, all the colleagues who are involved in the preparation of this uh, Olympic Games, we are very much looking forward to this day. We are counting the days, and we are doing a lot of the countdowns to make sure that everything is ready. Last week, President Xi Jinping, while meeting uh, IOC President Thomas Bach, he pointed out once again that after six years of preparation, everything is ready, and we will stage the game on time. As I have explained to you earlier, we have a number of milestone events, and we have completed them all. So I would like to uh, share with you some more information. First of all, uh, infrastructure and uh, venues. All these have all the construction have been com completed and they operate very well. The construction have was completed in the year 2020, and uh, we have got the certification of IFs. They are all, all in operation. Three uh, Olympic villages and the main press center have all been completed in its direction uh, construction. And so you have already experienced the level of service at uh, MMC. Of course, a lot of things still need to be improved. We'll definitely uh, work on that and make sure that we provide best service to uh, media. We have also improved the level of accessibility to meet uh, the level of uh, accessible infrastructure for Paralympics. Besides the venue, I think you are also concerned about the support system for the operation of the sport, sports. And uh, we can say that everything is ready and all are in good operation. One standard is applied to all the three uh, competition zones, hotels, catering, health care, uh, transport, volunteers, and all these work have been under good uh, order in good progress. I believe that in your work and life uh, here, uh, in the closed loop, you can experience the uh, professional and warm service. In uh, recent uh, coverage of the event, I noticed that there have been some elements about the use of technology, the use of hydrogen for transport, uh, the use of robots and uh, 5G and uh, cloud broadcasting. These new technologies have all been used. Another one is uh, sustainability and uh, Olympic legacy. This is uh, a topic of a lot of uh, attention. We have achieved all the targets, and a lot of uh, achievements have been made. The preparation of Beijing Olympic Games, and we have uh, all implemented the Olympic 2020 agenda. This agenda was passed in 2014, and Beijing won the bidding successfully in 2015. And so in the whole process of preparing for the game and hosting the game, we exactly followed the Olympic 2020 agenda. So we have introduced the sustainable program and carbon neutrality. 
in Yanqing and the Zhang Jiakou, we have also paid a lot of attention to the ecological restoration, low carbon revenue, uh, low carbon venue, low carbon transport, and low carbon standards. All the uh, venues have used green electricity 100 percent. On top of that, we also have a legacy program for each one of the venues. We have made a plan for its use after the games. Recently, we have just got the IOC um, for the three Olympic parks in Beijing, Zhang Jiakou, and uh, uh, Chongli in Yanqing. And we have also made the target of 300 million people uh, start uh, ice and snow uh, sports. And so uh, snow and uh, ice sports are now become the latest fashion. Of course, uh, COVID's countermeasure is still on the top of our agenda. We have been uh, making effective measures, and everything is under control. Without a safe game, we, there, there will not be a game. And so we make sure that the health and safety of all the Olympic participants stays at the top priority of all the work. Together with IOC and IPC, we introduced the two versions of the playbooks, which have made all the countermeasures in very much detail. And all these uh, uh, measures have been tested very well during the test events. And uh, we have also been testing these countermeasures in some of the uh, uh, in the testing operation of some of the venues. So we have made everything ready. And we are only waiting for the kickoff of the games. And we are ready to receive all the guests and uh, to let you tell us whether we have done a good job. Thank you. The fifth one. I'd like to ask you a question. First of all, Happy New Year. I want to ask you a question about uh, before any big opening night, there are nerves, there are butterflies. You talk to any great actor before an opening night, as many performances that they've performed, they, they do have butterflies worried about maybe reciting their lines. I'm, I'm wondering, as we're three days away, four days away, what are the nerves right now? What are your concerns right now? What do you have butterflies about as far as making these games work? Thank you. Uh, the opening ceremony, yes, everybody is concerned about it in the media coverage. And you can see the rehearsal of the opening ceremony. It works very well. I would like to invite uh, uh, Madam Jia Rong to answer that question. Thank you very much for your question. For the opening ceremony, as uh, Mr. Wei Dong said, it will be a splendid opening ceremony. You will be impressed when you see it. It is uh, warm and it is beautiful. So it's like uh, 72 hours countdown to the opening ceremony. What makes us most nervous? I don't have anything immediately in my mind, actually, because overall, we are quite excited. And the feeling is that everything is getting ready, and we're only waiting for the curve, uh, curtain to open. As Wei Dong just now said, uh, President Bach from IOC and his team have already arrived in Beijing, and they are working together very closely with the senior management of Beijing 2022. They have a daily coordination mechanism, and they have been very effective. A lot of the friends from the media have, a lot of the friends from media have raised some concerns and issues, and all these issues are being properly addressed. I don't think there's anything I'm particularly worried. Thank you very much. As Jerome just now said, she does not have anything immediately in her mind for the worries and the concerns. For me, personally, what I'm most worried is that I probably will be very much engaged in some other work so that I will miss the live broadcast of the opening ceremony. Any other questions? Yes, this gentleman, please. I'm from Xinhua.
standard game. So can you give, uh, give us a couple of more examples how to reflect this athlete-centered spirit? And so today is the first year of the uh, year of Tiger. So what are the measures that have been made to make athletes feel the spirit of the Spring Festival? Thank you very much for the question. And so this athlete-centered spirit is implemented in all the stages of the preparation. So the Athletes Commission was established at the beginning of the preparation work about a week ago. I was talking to the operation team of Capital Indoor Stadium and uh, we, I was uh, I raised, uh, someone raised uh, the issue that uh, there, and so it might happen that uh, the dress of the athletes of figure skating uh, might got uh, broken. And so we prepared some uh, needles and uh, uh, threads, and we even uh, prepared a tailor on the site to, to help them to mend. Uh, their uh, dresses if it gets broken. So on some uh, snow sports, uh, some, uh, and it's possible that the athletes might get injured even before the competition. And so the concern was raised that uh, they, whether it's possible to open the accessible facilities prepared for the Paralympics so that we can use uh, those accessible facilities for those injured athletes. Yes, for athletes who have attended uh, previous uh, Olympics, we, we have some personal experience of how the games run. And so we raised some of these concerns. And we are also talking about making this Beijing Olympic uh, Winter Games a sustainable game. So we have established the Sustainable Development Commission. And for athletes, we also provide our suggestions and recommendations for sustainable development. So in the post-Olympic stage, we will invite more children to the venue. Maybe they do not remember very much about such an experience, but sometime in the future, they will remember that in 2022, there was a, a splendid uh, winter game being held in China. A lot of uh, great athletes did something great uh, in Beijing at the winter games. And so we hope that we can record all these in the venues. We hope that the experience of all these athletes could be shared with the future generation. In the past six years, we raised a lot of concerns, especially a lot of the detailed things. And the organizing committee paid a lot of attention to our suggestions and concerns during the spring festival. Of course, food is the most important thing. So as Mr. Zhao just now mentioned, we are now preparing a big feast so to show our hospitality to the whole world. Food is important, dumpling, uh, sticky rice dumpling, besides food. And uh, we also invite the athletes to, to make and prepare some of the food. Another thing that is also a tradition here is a Chinese calligraphy. For example, you can try writing the uh, Chinese character happiness, uh, like what we do for Chinese New Year. And also athletes can try other things like a paper cutting, uh, not only to experience the Chinese New Year, but also to help them to relax and to feel less stressed about the upcoming competitions. Because I was also a, an athlete, and I know it's very important to have such opportunities to help them to, rel to relax. Thank you for your question. Next. The third row, uh, the lady in the third row, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm uh, from uh, China Daily. My question is to Mr. Wu Xiaonan. We know that uh, the National Speed Skating Oval is the only one uh, newly built uh, ice venue, and uh, the ice is also called the fastest ice. So this uh, venue that is so-called ice uh, ribbon, what kind of new experiences it will be able to create for the athletes, and what are your expectations to the performances of our athletes? Thank you very much for your question. I noticed just now that many reporters have paid attention to the construction of the venues of the Beijing Games and uh, the facilities. The spokesperson um, introduced the venues and also mentioned the national speed skating oval, that is the ice. 
uh, it is also called the ice ribbon. And uh, like Madame Yan said, uh, it showcased the very poetic uh, meaning by, through the design of the venue. And uh, I also would like to welcome all of you to visit the venue on site. The ice making has already finished because if you visit there, you can, I, I'm sure you can feel more traditional Chinese culture uh, atmosphere and sense through the ice there. I'm very proud of that. So I really invite all of you to visit the uh, ice ribbon to also witness the excitement of the speed skating competitions that were staged there. And you also know that the ice ribbon in the process of the construction of uh, the uh, venue have adopted the transcritical CO2 refrigeration system, which was the first time for the in the whole Olympic history to use this technology, but it is also the venue for speed skating to use this refrigerator, refrigeration system. It is a very green and environmentally friendly refrigeration system because the traditional Florent refrigeration system uh, the GWP potential is about 3,900. And by using CO2, this value is only one. And also, it's a damage to the uh, ozone, is, uh, ozone layer is only is zero. So we can say that it is the most environmentally friendly refriger uh, refrigerant that can be used for a speed skating venue. And that is also our contribution to the environmental protection aspect of the games, also the result of our joint efforts together with uh, uh, the IOC. And I'm very happy to see that this design has been realized at this venue. Second, the efficiency of uh, ice making through CO2 is also much higher. And also, it can give us a more smooth and uh, uh, level, leveled surface of ice. We can see that. In the venue, there is a 130 kilometer long uh, tubes, and the temperature difference between the tubes can be controlled at within 0 0.5 Celsius, which lay a very good foundation for the smooth ice making at the venue. But of course, uh, it is not a simple ice making system, but a systematic project, including water treatment, air conditioning, and the lighting system through LEDs. So it is a very complicated systematic project. And I'm sure that the athletes who have trained at the venue during the past days have experienced that. Uh, I talked to some of them. Uh, some of them have already uh, participated in the test events last year, but also some are using it for the first time. And they all told us that their experience with the ice surface has been very good. And uh, that has made me very happy. So I look forward to watching them uh, giving their best performance here. The third feature of this venue is uh, the ice making through CO2 can also make more contributions to the sustainable development of the uh, venue in terms of uh, other aspects, including uh, heat recovery. So about 2 million kilowatt hours of electricity can be saved every year by using this technology. So I look forward that after the games, we can witness the continuous sustainable use of this venue. Even if after the games, I'm sure that the uh, spirit of sustainability will be, uh, will be maintained by such venues. And like Yang Yang said, we also hope that in the post-games uh, period, we can also share the legacy of the venues with the younger generations. And I just remembered that when Mr. Samaranch visited the venue, he saw the entry wall of the athletes at the venue, and he said that I'm sure after the games, uh, we will see whole new results on the on the athletes' wall. 
and I'm very happy to hear that. And uh, also, I uh, I'm very happy to to know that after the games, the venue will become a city uh, complex that can be enjoyed by the public of the city in their sports events and uh, cultural events so that it can make continuous contribution to the sustainability in the post-games period. And back to the beginning of our press conference, today is the first day of the Chinese New Year, and uh, uh, in just uh, several days, we will, well, we will begin the first competition at the Ice Ribbon, and we welcome all of you to come here to watch the games together with us. Thank you, and uh, I wish you a happy Chinese New Year. I I'm sure that we have all felt the excitement and uh, sentiment of uh, Mr. Wu Xiaonan. Thank you for your question. And uh, next. First of all, Happy Chinese New Year. I'm uh, with uh, Xinhua News Agency. I have a COVID-19 countermeasure-related question to Mr. Huang Chun online. At the press conference on January 29th, you said that the closed loop management or CLM measures have been proven to be very effective. You also have mentioned that with more assets coming, maybe we will have reach a peak in discovering the positive cases among the arriving assets. So what are the situation now? And uh, what are the, uh, where can you see or feel the effectiveness of uh, the playbook V2? Thank you for your question. On January 29th, we did uh, disclose information about the situation with uh, more arriving athletes. Actually, at, at, on the day of the pre-opening of the villages, we already have started to have more uh, incoming uh, participants. And uh, after the official opening of the village, we continue to receive more participants, and I remember that the peak day, on the peak day, we had 1,700 arri new arrivals. And during this period, we can see that since January 23rd, we started to issue, to uh, publicize the information about the testing and the positive cases, including that information within the closed loop. And we can see the changes in such uh, information and in the numbers. And uh, during the uh, past two days, we had uh, a little bit less athletes and uh, participants arrive, arriving and uh, also less positive cases. But I'm sure that we can see the changes in the number is related to the number of uh, uh, participants arriving and also is related to the spreading of Omicron globally. Another aspect is the testing method used at the customs uh, of the airport, and uh, both the accuracy and the effectiveness of the testing have been improved at the airport, and also based on the strict personal protection within the closed loop and uh, also frequent PCR test, we see that even though we have seen more cases of positive, positive cases, but we didn't have a, a large scale spread within the closed loop. So we think that the overall situation is still under control. So all stakeholders, including the athletes, the officials, and also including the Chinese public, uh, I think we are all very safe, and there's no need to worry, uh, because overall we think it is very effective. The measures have been very effective, but that does uh, that do not, uh, and uh, we we uh, and because of that, we don't think we are considering making adjustment, making uh, major adjustments to the countermeasures, because we think it's uh, uh, very effective so far. Thank you for your question. Next. The, the journalist in black. Yes, you, please. I will put this question in French, if I may, if you can hear English. Is English coming through? Yes, please. I'm Bruno Frangioli. 
Je, I'm coming from Sport Business France. Happy New Year, first of all. There are already very many accredited persons who have been infected, like Tony Estonguet from Paris 2024. Could you tell us how many accredited persons have given up the idea to come to Beijing because they have been infected? And I would like to put a question regarding the budget. What are the main items of income and expenditure in your budget? Okay, for your first question, I'd like to invite my colleague, Mr. Huang Chun, to uh, take that question. Thank you for your question. I also hope that uh, you will have a uh, happy Chinese New Year in Beijing while enjoying the games. I have been also following the news, and uh, I noticed that uh, some of the athletes and uh, coaches and uh, the officials, because they have been tested positive overseas, uh, they may have canceled their uh, travel to China. And another policy that we have is for newly affected. If within the five days before their departure, they can uh, have a full test and uh, for all the four tests, they are tested negative, they can still come to China. So uh, this is a policy we have, and we hope that uh, for people who have not made it to China, they can recover soon, and also I hope they will also have uh, their negative test results soon so that they can still make it to the games. Okay, the second question will be taken by Madam Yan Jiarong. Okay, thank you for your question. The Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games uh, budget during the bidding was approved by the IOC sessions. During the preparations, even though the preparation environment has encountered some changes, but bidding 2022 has been uh, making efforts to coordinate the income and expenditures. On the one hand, we considered the increase in the expenditure because of COVID-19, but also on the other hand, we have been implementing implementing the uh, uh, preparation principle of staging a simple uh, and safe games. And according to the information we have now, we have kept a balance between the income and expenditure. And uh, considering the inflation rate, uh, our budget scale has been kept at the same level that we had during the bidding period. And uh, with the development of uh, the COVID and other possible changes, we may still have to adjust the budget. But the final budget, according to the rules, the Beijing 2022 Organizing Committee will publicize the information to the public when uh, in due time. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, this gentleman, please. I'm from uh, People's Daily. This question is to Madam Lin Sunjun. Tomorrow there will be a torch relay. In the design of the torch, there are a lot of Chinese elements. Besides that, in the design of the emblem, there are also a lot of uh, Chinese features. So, what is the principle in your design, and what are the messages you want to convey in designing the emblem? Thank you very much for that question. Beijing Olympic and the Paralympic uh, BIL is a complete and whole uh, visual reflection. So it reflects the Chinese philosophy of people and nature combined together. We took uh, inspiration from the nature in the design of the emblem, and we embedded Chinese character in the design of the emblem, and we also follow the basic rules and principles of aesthetics. We also reflect uh, the spirit of snow and ice sports and the spirit of Olympics. And so this is a whole system of design for BIL. 
In our design, we were also trying to innovate and embed Chinese character. We also have the emblem in the design. We collected inspiration and idea from Chinese character and the Chinese calligraphy. The uh, mascot of Beijing Olympics uh, is Bing Dun Dun is a panda, a national treasure, and the mascot of Paralympics is um, a reflection of uh, 2,000 years of Chinese history. That is a, a red Chinese lantern, the flame or the torch. We collected the idea from the nature. They are plants growing uh, one year after another. And uh, we also collected uh, the uh, idea from uh, the oracle and the ancient Chinese uh, calligraphy. At the same time, we also used the ancient skill of uh, uh, printing in China. And uh, we also used uh, the uh, jade design in ancient China and to put it into the design of the medals. This is very much in line with the design of the medals of the 2008 Olympics. So this is a reflection of uh, Beijing being a two-time Olympic city. So very often you will, very soon you will see that in the design of the venues, we also reflect the element of Chinese painting of mountain and trees in uh, ink. So there are a lot of uh, interesting and delicate designs in BIL in the venues. In 2017, we launched the emblems, and very soon you will see the designs and looks of the uh, venues. You will uh, personally experience the uh, unfolding of Chinese culture and Chinese aesthetics. There is a lot of uh, Chinese story, and we intend to tell the whole world that the China has a lot of uh, tradition and ancient history, but it is also looking forward into the future. More questions? That gentleman in red, please. Good morning. I'm um, from Xinjiang Bao, from Beijing. This question is uh, to Madam Yang Yang. Um, so you have uh, attended a lot of competitions in different countries, and so you may have celebrated the New Year in different countries. What do you think are the difference between Chinese New Year and New Year in other countries? What are your most memorable experience in celebrating the New Year? I served at the national team for 13 years. I spent all the New Year celebrations overseas. So every time, of course, uh, the uh, competition and the games were very stressful, but uh, mostly uh, the team was trying to organize some activities for us uh, to enjoy the spring festival, for example, making dumplings. So this year, we also plan to organize some activities so that uh, the athletes can have some sweet memories. And in my memory, it's also about a competition during the Spring Festival. So uh, Polo, a very well-known U.S. short track skating athlete, uh, he joined us uh, in having dumplings. And he realized that we have to use du eat dumplings with garlic. I think he said that he used the garlic he could have had for his whole life, um, but his stomach survived. So we had a lot of uh, interactions with foreign athletes uh, during the time of the festival. During the Olympics, uh, sometimes it will be in the time of the Valentine's Day. For two of the Olympics, uh, during the on the Valentine's Day, I received the roses. These are quite um, uh, memorable experiences besides the games and the competition. Of course, the competition is still the most important. So the uh, spokesperson have already shared with you that uh, all the venues are now ready. We very much look forward. 
to the good uh, game and the good competition uh, for the athletes and also that they can have a memorable experience in Beijing. Due to time constraint, we now come to the last question. This one, please. Uh, my name is uh, Graham Dunbar from Associated Press. Happy Chinese Year to everyone. Um, a question for Yang Yang about athletes. Um, athletes should have protections under the Olympic Charter to express opinions in press conferences and in mix zones. What is your understanding about how that will operate during these games? I mean, should the athlete face any consequences for things that are said or things that happen in Olympic, uh, official Olympic uh, press events? Okay, uh, we have Rule 50 from IOC, from the IOC Charter. It says very clearly about uh, the freedom of um, um, speech for athletes, for what kind of expressions they can make at what time during what event. Athletes are role models for the whole world. There are a lot of attention on them. They have their own opinions and they want to share their opinions. That is a very important. But Olympics is a very special occasion. It is a time for us to demonstrate to the whole world that people have differences, but we can get together and we can show to the whole world with our own action that being together, we can overcome a lot of difficulties and achieve significant progress for mankind. In the Olympic Charter, there are very strict rules. So for the um, medal ceremonies and the press conference and uh, so at the medal ceremonies and during the competition, they cannot uh, make their opinions, but at other occasions like the press conference or during the uh, interviews, the athletes are free to express their opinions. But the athletes need to be responsible for what they say as what I'm doing here now. Well, work together with IOC and make sure that Rule 50 is strictly followed. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have already seen the year of tiger, a year of encouragement and vitality due to time constraint. We'll have to conclude the press conference here today. I would also like to ex uh, extend my gratitude to my colleagues at the breakout session online. We very much look forward to the excellent performance of the athletes, and we hope that friends from the media can record and communicate all the uh, impressive moments of the games. Thank you very much. That is the end of today's press conference. Thank you very much.